What's up gamers? Today we're going to be talking about 50 grounded tips that you didn't ask for, but you probably need. Now for any of these tips, if I have any other videos that dive deeper into these specific topics, I'm going to leave them down in the description below. Make sure if any of these tips actually helped you out, that you hit the like button, that would be wonderful. And subscribe because we're almost to 10,000 subscribers here on the YouTube. These tips are not going to be in any specific order, so fair warning for that but I'm gonna try and make it through them as fast as I can and hopefully they can help you out. So let's get into it. All right, the first tip that I have is the ability to cook and to jerkify your food with spicy and or salty weapons. So once you get further in the game, you have the ability to put a status effect on your weapons and more or less, you can put spicy damage on a weapon or salty damage on a weapon. Now, if you kill an aphid or a weevil or a gnat, with the spicy weapon, it will give you cooked food, and this works for the spicy staff or any weapon that you put spicy damage on, as well as if you kill them, uh, tadpoles, I guess, are included in this as well, with a salty weapon, you will get the jerky for that specific thing. Like I said, these tips are going to be all over the place in no specific order, so we're going to move on to the next one, and that is going to be make sure you analyze every resource. And when you do that, or maybe you didn't know this, if you have, say, six items in your inventory that you need to analyze and you go to the field station and you analyze three of them and then you have to wait another 20 minutes before you can analyze another three, if you actually go to another field station, you can scan an additional three. Or you can scan three, sleep, wake up, and scan three more. So you can bounce around to different field stations uh, to make sure that you get everything analyzed as quickly as possible so you can unlock everything in the game. Now, if you don't have a spicy or a salty weapon yet and you're not that far into the game, you can build a simple food farm. All you need to do is build this pyramid type structure and more or less just throw some mushrooms down into the pit and all of the weevils will flock in and collect in the pit. Another tip for food while we're at it and on the topic is there's an island called Aphid Island. I'll show you right here on the map. And more or less, island is covered with aphids. It's even kind of shaped like aphids. So uh, big tip there is to go and clear out all of the grass off of that island so it makes it easier to find all the aphids. Uh, and this also works real well for aphid honeydew. You'll find quite a bit of that on the island as well. And there are some weevils, but there is one downside to it. And that's mosquitoes and wasps hover around there once you get them unlocked and progress to that certain part of the game. Uh, so you'll have to look out for one mosquito and a couple occasional wasps trying to mess with you. But other than that, aphid island is OP for food. Next tip when I learned this is pretty beneficial. If you have a bow or a spear or anything for that matter, a rock or peblet or if you see a dew drop that you can't quite reach on a blade of grass you can shoot it down with your bow or throw a weapon or a rock or anything at it and it will fall down and you can catch it also make sure if you don't want your grass to respawn that you chop the top let the blades fall and then you chop the bottom as well and get the plant fiber and once you chop the bottom of the grass blade that will ensure that your grass will not respawn again so you can clear out an area uh, for a potential build. The biggest and most overpowered tip I can give any new gamer is Peblet Spears. Once you analyze pebbles, it gives you the ability to craft Peblet Spears. And Peblet Spears in large quantities, say you make 10 or 20 of them, you will be able to kill a lot of stuff in the game. And this includes bombardier beetles, uh, stink bugs, ants, ladybugs, anything at all. Throw them, pick them up, throw them, pick them up. It's super strong. It's probably the strongest weapon in the game, especially early game. So make sure you take full advantage of throwing spears. The next tip I've got for you is uh, when you're inside of a grinder, or a spinner or an oven and you're pretty much loading like tons like 30 ovens at a time uh you can double click and space bar this i guess is if you're on pc you could double click and space bar um to more or less speed fill your oven spinners and grinders and whatever else make sure you take advantage of that because uh you know if you're if you've got 30 or 40 ovens like i do uh it definitely knocks down the time another big tip here is wide interaction so if you go of your settings your game settings here you'll find a tick bar that's probably not ticked on um it's probably ticked off but <laughs> it's called wide interaction what that allows you to do is if you've ever been in a predicament where you're looking at the ground and you're looking at a pebble and unless you're looking directly at that pebble you cannot pick it up well wide interaction 
gives you the ability to pick things up without looking directly at them. So this is a super good tool. Um, I did notice though that if you're in custom game and you're using the NAT, make sure you turn wide interaction off while you're using the NAT so that your, your NAT's crosshair doesn't do all kinds of funky weird things. So now sap collectors are a little bit crazy. So you can almost place a sap collector on any piece of fallen log, fallen stick, any piece of the oak tree, any root sticking out of the ground, anything at all. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're trying to find a good place to put sap collectors because you can literally put them anywhere. I came up with a uh, idea for um, binding my keyboard key to my mouse and I found out that my SteelSeries software actually allows me to set up a macro to where it can spam a certain key if I'm holding down a key on my mouse. So I took advantage of that uh, when it comes to, you know, the many towers I've destroyed and stuff like that. If you guys have watched my content for a while, uh, we've destroyed lots of builds and just picking items up off the ground. This macro helps a lot as well as loading and unloading stick pallets and stem pallets um and just building in general this this is a this is a huge thing to look into for sure well, this is one of those links i'll leave down in the description for a little bit more in-depth detail there now if you're trying to light your base up and you know you get your sconces or your uh you know your lamps or whatever and they're just doesn't seem like they're bright enough um if you've gotten to the point in the game where you have uh, made it to the charcoal bin and you've gathered some charcoal you've unlocked the ability to make the char torch so if you put that char torch in an item frame that is going to be the brightest light that the game has to offer and uh it really lights up a room and you place these all over your base then you're you know it's going to be daytime all the time with that being said used to i had a awesome uh, way to underlight like roads and floors in your house. You could put uh, sconces in between foundations, but they recently fixed that. But there's still a workaround around it uh, to where you can use like roofs as floors. Uh, if you want to make a roadway like I did here in my sanctuary town, then you can uh, more or less use your foundation floors. And then if you're building the roadway out of like a rooftop or something like that, you can hide uh, lights underneath of it. So, you know, it'll more or less be an underlit roadway which is super cool back to another tip for somewhat beginners is you have the ability to upgrade your armor you're eventually going to unlock the smithing station pretty early in the game i believe it's after you complete the hedge lab don't quote me on that i'm not too sure you will unlock the smithing station after turning in a purple chip and that will allow you to upgrade your armor weapons and tools a quick tip with that is if you have say a level one or a, yeah just a regular base tier two insect axe and it's gonna about to start to break rather than repairing it you know items that you would need to repair it you can upgrade it a level and repair your items that way this also is a really big tip for if you get the pinch whacker weapon uh, which is located over by the milk carton area next to the little pond um, if you go up there and you get the pinch whacker out of the little hidden room you're not going to have repair glue for quite some time uh, which is what's required to repair the pinch whacker so it's a good idea to not full upgrade the pinch whacker when you get it and just upgrade it as you need repairs uh, and it'll make it last a lot longer until you get to the black ant lab to unlock the uh, super glue masher now if you didn't know you can throw your hammers and axes and other tools at resources and that will break them so if you have a hammer you throw it at rocks uh, it will break it i don't know if this is really a huge tip or not but uh you know i've utilized it a time or two to get uh gum and stuff like that down off of the high spots throwing the shovel up at the gum I believe that still works don't quote me on that also there's a little trick where you say you're getting clay with a shovel you hit the clay and you block immediately after it'll allow you to re-swing faster than just doing it without blocking so kind of work on making that a habit to where you block pretty much every time after you swing on a, on a clay piece and it'll allow you to pretty much refresh the cooldown of your swing make sure you peep every creature and if you're missing some think about things like the meaty gnat which is over by the trash cans in the corner of the map uh that's one that i was missing also grubs uh termites and the termite king stuff like that uh just make sure you peep every creature before you kill it or you can kill it and peep their body after the fact as well so either way and then once you kill them um you're gonna 
killed them a bunch of times until they drop what's called a gold card. And you can see here that uh, more or less the gold card is just a copy of the regular card. It's just gold. And once you complete all those, uh, and I think it's 20, 40, and 60 gold cards, you unlock Trapper Peeper 1, 2, and 3. And that is a additional crit percent chant hit chance, I believe. I don't know what crit damage or crit chance i can't remember but yeah gold cards peep them peep them all if you've ever watched another creator's video and you're like man he's really going fast you're like how the heck does he do that well natural explorer is the mutation that you get and you unlock natural explorer by going to separate pois which is a point of interest things like juice boxes um you know the oak tree the milk carton the gnome the etch a sketch thing like different pois right so different like structures in the map uh and once you unlock and have been to a certain amount of those things that's how you unlock natural explorer is by finding all of those places and that will give you a huge speed boost and if you couple that with aphid slippers then you're really going to be hauling butt and then by the time that you're used to natural exploring aphid slippers, you're never gonna wanna take them off again. Now with the new 1.2 update, they added in the cozy levels. Now make sure uh, that you're adding all the stuff that you can absolutely think of as far as uh, decorations for your houses to get you to a max level of five uh, to make sure you unlock all of the blueprints and the craftable items um, from that. And you also get a hauling strength mutation uh, that's gonna allow you to carry a lot more grass blades and stems as well. And I will leave a link to the video further explaining the cozy level stuff in the description. If you haven't found the resource scanner yet, this is a very useful tool that's gonna allow you to find any bugs or resources throughout the yard. Um, I'll take you through the hedge lab here. We're going to head up the branches and it's gonna be the first door you see on the left side. I believe it has some science normally in front of the door and you're gonna run through here. You're gonna encounter a couple robots and you just kill them and then you hit the lever in the back and that's gonna unlock the resource scanner for you. And more or less, you can access this resource scanner from any science station in the whole entire backyard um, to scan for all the items you might need. Now I have a video that explains every badge location. And like I said, I'll link that in the description below, but I will tell you guys where the most overpowered and important badge is. And that's gonna be the compliance badge. And you're gonna find it over here by these bombardier beetles next to the porch, uh, right underneath this, uh, outlet thing here and it's going to be right here on this skeleton uh just sitting right here in the middle of all these larvae so you got to make sure you kill all the larvae or just run through and grab it and run uh but the complimentary badge is going to allow you to heal every time you block so it's super super good so if you're running around and you're running out of quartzite and marble and you don't know how the heck you're supposed to upgrade more than one weapon in the game eventually you will unlock the ability to craft the actual brittle sturdy and uh heavy whetstone so don't get discouraged just make sure that you progress through the game get burgle chips turn them in and uh that will unlock the ability to craft all of the upgrade items that you need to upgrade your gear now if you need to get to the upper yard early game for whatever reason i'm going to show you a cool little jump up trick that i use in my speed runs um and this will allow you to get up top um, and if you bring a dandelion tuft with you then this will also give you the ability to get down to the pinch whacker layer without uh having to build up to it now with that being said in some instances of the game it's a good idea to use the camera mode to kind of look around if you're needing to look over top of a ledge or if you're needing to kind of look around say Say you're getting your milk molar indicators going off on your watch and you don't know where it's at so you can use camera mode to kind of fly around and just get a good idea of where that milk molar might be or where that trinket is you can't find something like that so utilize that to the best of your ability next tip and this is huge if you're going into the coal area is make sure when it comes to mints or spicy candy or sour candy make sure you eat 10 of them to unlock the max tier mutation that each of them has to offer. Mints specifically give you sizzle protection. If you eat 10 of them, you will unlock fresh defense. That will give you sizzle protection so you can be a little bit more safe when you go into the coal area, but make sure you definitely also bring some antlion armor. And if you happen to kill a bunch of ladybird larvae, they also drop a trinket that will uh, help also with sizzle protection. And coupled with the antlion armor and fresh defense, that's going to be your best bet for surviving uh, inside of the 
coal area and the sandbox for that matter. All right, now jumping way back to the beginning of the game here with this tip, um, with the spears, again, Sombadier beetles and stink bugs. I'm gonna show you here how easy it is to kill stink bugs and bombardier beetles to get your parts that you need for crafting the hammer and the axe tier two. Uh, it's actually pretty simple if you've got the pebble spears. So just keep sending them until they die and uh, collect your bug parts and move on with your day. Recently, in a recent update, they added um, the water containers that are pretty much in every laboratory um, around the yard. Not everyone, but most of them. Uh, but you'll find them in Burgle's lab and uh, I believe the Hayes lab has one, the Hedge lab has one. Uh, but more or less you can, if you're running low on water, you can top off on these little uh, water filtration stations and top up on your water. If you're like me, then you don't run around with a canteen like a dum-dum. And these are, you know, can be potential lifesavers at, at some point. As far as accessories go in the game, there's a lot. Like I told you earlier, the badges, I'll link that video down in the description. Uh, there's also trinkets you can get from killing bosses. Uh, you can get one from chopping the hot dog. So every time you see a hot dog and you have a tier two X, make sure you go chop that hot dog because it'll give you a trinket. Trinket's not all that. And I've never used it before because it seems a little weird. But still, nonetheless, it's a trinket uh, to add to your collection. Um, you can also get a trinket from mint, spicy candy, sour candy, and salt. Um, make sure you get all four of those. They're pretty difficult to get for sure. Make sure you're um, always chopping the candy when you see it, whether you need it or not. So uh, also there's drops from feathers and from the haze fungus as well. Uh, trinkets from them as well, just random drop chances. So make sure you're, you're harvesting everything. You know, there's a lot of times when you'll go out and you'll say, man, I need to go get some lint. And then while you're out getting lint, you end up coming back with a whole bag of other stuff that you didn't actually need but you grabbed anyway because you didn't know exactly when you were going to need it and yeah that's grounded for you now all the candy in the yard once you get to pretty much the end game and you're saying hey i need some mints and you scan on the resource scanner and you see no mints well that's because all of the candy the respawnable candy pieces share a global cooldown so there can only be say a max 15 pieces of candy in the yard at a time. Um, and those can be any random pieces of candy. For instance, it might be 12 sour candy, two spicy candy, and one mint um, in the yard. Now, no more mints and no more spicy are gonna spawn until you go destroy all of those sour ones first. And obviously it's not guaranteed that they will spawn. You might as well just go farm all the candy um, in hopes that you know you'll get some mints on the next on the next respawn day. Now when it comes to perfect blocking and you're playing on medium or whoa or mild honestly whatever the second and third difficulties are um perfect blocking is huge okay perfect blocking is going to get you through the game especially the final infected brood mother fight you're never going to be able to complete it unless you uh get good with perfect blocking so make sure you study the attack patterns of every bug uh there's a pretty good progression for different bugs as far as like uh studying like spider attacks uh you want to start out with like an orb weaver move up to a wolf spider move up to the black widow and then you know up to like the infected brood mother type of thing but just be listen for the audio cues um and the visual cues and also i'm gonna link a video down below for that as well but yes perfect blocking is huge and you could literally just get good with perfect blocking and wear no armor and be totally fine and blast through the game with no problem. A huge tip from someone in the Discord just earlier was uh, make sure you're constantly doing your burgle quest quests because raw science is hard to come by in the end game. Um, and you can utilize that raw science now to duplicate items in the game, such as weapons or trinkets or materials, building materials, raw resources, anything at all. So make sure you're fumbling around with those burgle quests um, periodically, especially if you get bored or something, just go run some burgle quests and get them done. Collect some raw science so that you can uh, utilize that duplicator later on. In the so there is a setting here uh, that you can use if you perhaps place a blueprint in a place that you can't get it un, you can't remove it or it's annoying and you just want to get it out of the way. Uh, there's a setting here called remove blueprints or something like that. And uh, that will more or less remove all close bl blueprints. It doesn't remove all of them in the game, but it removes all of them close within like a five foundation area bubble around you more or less. So make sure you use that. And you can also use this setting in uh, the settings here as well that you can uh, 
when you die, you can respawn at the kit case. And if you need to recover your backpack, say you died like 2,000 centimeters away, uh, you can just recover your backpack and it'll bring it and put it right back in the kid's case for you so you can grab all your stuff. Now, if you're close to the end game and you need bug parts like black ox beetle horns or ladybird larva shell or ladybird shells or things like that, uh, you can use the waft emitter to summon bug waves in and pretty much farm them for bug parts. You put bug parts into the waft emitter, press the OK button, and it sends a whole horde of hundreds of black ox beetles at you, and you can sit there and farm them for all of their shiny parts if you want. But make sure you're prepared because it sends 10 black ox beetles at you. It's pretty, it's pretty rough if you get the the meter on the waft emitter all the way up to max. Make sure when you're selecting a spot to build your first base at that it's close by Lots of resources like clovers and sap, pretty much anything you're gonna need to build any of the items inside of your base. Also acorns and stuff like that. Make sure all that's readily available so you don't have to run all over the yard to go you know, round up some materials. Another big tip here, a lot of people, the most hated bug in the game to fight against is mosquitoes for some reason, uh, picked by the community in a couple of different polls and stuff I've seen. Uh, mosquitoes are everyone's most hated, so if you want an easy way out for killing mosquitoes, all you have to do is build a blueprint box, uh, more or less, that uh, is probably about five by five wide with a roof on top, probably about two or three high on the roof, uh, and you can just stand in the middle of it and and get the aggro from the mosquitoes and they just can't fly through the blueprints for some reason. This has been this way for, for a very long time um, and they still have yet to fix it yet. So make sure you utilize, you know, as of May 31st, they haven't fixed it. So make sure you utilize that tip. All right, folks, that's 50 tips. Holy moly, that's a lot of tips. Hopefully you found some in there that will help you out along your grounded journey. You have tips that I did not mention in this video and make sure you leave those in the comments. Um, and I can do a collaboration of all the tips you guys leave in the comments and make another tip video. So if that's something you want to do, drop your tips down in the comments. It's something you think will help somebody out. Um, and I'll make sure I pin the best one that I think is the most uh, helpful thing that I might've missed along the ride here. So uh, yeah, guys, check the description for all the other videos for further explanation on all these topics. Uh, like I said, I hope this helped out and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you in the backyard. Have a good day.